In the medieval period, Poland was experiencing a golden age. And at its very heart was the powerful, wealthy, influential city of Kraków. But how did it get so wealthy? I've had to come 13 kilometers outside of the city to discover its secret. And would you believe it? The secret is salt. Usually I would have to be going down 800 steps, um, but because we're here getting special access, I get to go in the super fast lift. Oh, I can feel 200 meters of earth above me. <laughs> so you might think that salt mines are all about dark little tunnels. Well, look at this. This is just one of hundreds of chambers in this mine. This is one of the most spectacular. When tourists would come here in the 18th century, they would be accompanied by an orchestra as they sailed about on this lake. And of course, it tells us so much about how Vielitschka salt was made. This is the briny water and all around the edges, you can see where the water's evaporated, leaving these crystals that look almost like cauliflowers on the edges really is a magnificent space. Um, here, you can see the larger salt crystals. Look at that. Some of them beautifully translucent, really large lumps of crystal. But the crystals move in patterns that are utterly unique geologically. There isn't another site on Earth that is the replica of Vielitschka. There are hundreds of chambers running through these salt mines, but this has got to be the most spectacular. This is the St. Kinga Chapel. It's 35 meters in length, the single biggest underground place of worship in Europe. And every bit of it is made of salt rock from the ground right up to the chandeliers above. Every wall is sculpted carved into by the miners that lived and worked here. Most of the sculptures are the work of three men, Joseph and Thomas Markovsky, and this wonderful version of Leonardo's Last Supper, you can see that is by Antoni Birobek. Being a miner, it was hard, dangerous, dark, dismal work. Coming into an open, beautiful space like this would have given solace and hope, being surrounded by the saints and the stories of uh, the Bible. But also, I think something else is going on, because at the time that they're carving these sculptures in the 18th, 19th century, Poland doesn't really exist above ground. It's been partitioned off. Down here, these sculptors, these miners, were making a magical little world that represented all it was to have hope in Poland, taking inspiration from the past and building a new future. 